As you know, Lisk's ultimate vision is to provide an SDK for JavaScript developers to build their own blockchain applications within the Lisk ecosystem. And for that, the Lisk core code base will be used as a template to spin up new blockchains on which then, later on, the applications will be built on. By now, we have developed 41 Lisk core versions to bring it up to a certain point of scalability and stability. However, to bring the big improvements, we needed to go very deep into the code. And that's how Lisk Core 1.0 came about. And because we had to go so deep into the code itself, it took a long, long time to bring it to completion and an even longer time to finish the whole QA round. However, now Lisk Core 1.0 is finally done and it became one of our most important milestones within the Lisk ecosystem. Lisk Core 1.0 has been uh, the biggest milestone so far. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work with the team uh, for this uh, goal. Um, there are many, many commits and several releases that makes this uh, the biggest and the major stable uh, status of our application. There are many technological differences between 0.9 and 1.0. I'll start from replacing peer-to-peer -peer layer. So it doesn't use HTTP protocol anymore. It uses WebSocket protocol. We've introduced and implemented Socket cluster library, which resulted in very nice cooperation with John, who joined the team to support his library, implemented in Listcore in the best possible way. The one thing characteristic about Socket cluster is that it runs by default on multiple processes, which in the very simple manner improves the scalability of the whole ecosystem leaving processing transactions completely on separate processes than peer-to-peer -peer, uh, communication uh, with the other network participants uh, is happening. To utilize the full strength of WebSocket connections, uh, we've also tried to gather all the pros that are coming from storing the persistent connections to the other peers which are mainly about introducing RPC, remote procedure call, to the other peers when we expect some peers to reply with some messages. But we're also supporting the emit and subscribe events so we could easily push the blocks, push the transactions and push the signatures and also subscribe on receiving them. Both of those approaches we're utilizing uh, one socket cluster library developed by our Lightcurve team that merges those two concepts, make them easy to use, especially while operating on socket cluster library, utilizing multi-process communication. LISCore 1.0 comes with an entirely new data field, which provides you the option to send uh, up to 64 characters uh, together with your transaction. The public keys we use in our blockchain are exactly this size. For example, you could include an ownership hash of an external object like a GPG key or a block identity, linking that object to your list account. Anyway, I'm sure the community will come up with better and greater use cases. For now, there is no additional fee to include a message inside that transaction. This might change when we implement the awaited dynamic fee system. Until that moment, you can keep sending transactions with or without additional data for the regular fee of a transfer, which is 0.1 LSK. The next huge technological difference between 0.9 and 1.0 would be extending and replacing public API, so it follows the REST standards. We try to summarize and gather all the functionalities we want to achieve uh, with our public API. So it doesn't duplicate, it does exactly what needs to be done and does it mutate the state when it's unneeded to do it. We're following the standards and we're utilizing Swagger that uh, comes together with integrating all documentation, standard responses and standard error propagation mechanism. We're utilizing all of them by uh, integrating also Swagger Hub. So it exports in a very convenient way the public API documentation. So every consumer of our public API can easily refer to what responses he can expect from us. So it will be much easier to first adjust to the public API 
and then also to migrate from 0.9 API to 1.0 so he knows what to expect, what messages to expect. Another big improvement included in this release is the fully atomic block writes. It guarantees the highest standard of security when writing blocks to the database together with a significantly improved capability of processing blocks efficiently. The planning for this began in November 2016 and has been a tremendous team effort due to the complexity of the issue. Almost every member of the team participated in discussions to reach a final solution and several pull requests were merged, making this issue apparent of several others. The final expectations are a decrease on corrupted memory tables, which ensures better data integrity across nodes on the network, and finally, it results in a consensus that is easier to reach with your peers. We cannot forget that we've also introduced many code refactors as well as the rewrite of the whole test suite we're utilizing. We're introducing test suites on many different layers. We've increased the unit test coverage to cover all the critical modules we're utilizing. So all the important business logic is now 100% covered by unit tests. Uh, we've also introduced the systematic way of uh, testing API, of testing valid processes from the least core functional perspective, like uh, block processing, like fork recovery, like synchronized processes. Uh, we've also introduced the top upper layer test suite when we're spinning the small 10 nodes network on the local machine and testing all the connectivity problems that might occur by covering them in very simple and well-designed scenarios. Also, in a similar way that happened with Socket Cluster, the very close cooperation with PG Promise resulted in collaboration with Vitaly, the main creator of PG Promise library, who was also uh, ensuring that the way we are introducing and utilizing the PG Promise library is safe and secure. So now we can be sure that every time when one of the transactions within the block is unsuccessful, we'll undo all the previous ones without dealing with the potential inconsistent state issues that we've seen in the past in 0.9 version. Now the proposed solution is completely safe and secure in that sense. So because the core API was changing, we had to update our API client in Lisk Elements to match that API change. So currently, with version 0.9 of Lisk Core, we have Lisk.js published and released, and that lets you create transactions, sign them, broadcast them to the network, and interact with the core API in other ways. Coinciding with the version 1.0 release of Lisk Core, we'll be releasing version 1 of Lisk Elements, and that is a complete rewrite of the code base of Lisk.js and we took the opportunity to restructure the way we were doing things to use a resource-based approach. So if you're familiar with the list concepts like transactions, blocks, votes, uh, then you'll find it much more easy to use the API client if you're a developer. At the same time, we've updated the transactions module to support the new data field for type zero transactions, and we've exposed a few helper functions along the way. Uh, in general, we're taking a more modular approach now, so as well as functions to do with transactions and the API client. We also expose functionality to do with passphrases and cryptography. And we also give you a bunch of constants to do with the list network, like the maximum valid amount for a transaction. We've also taken care to give our functions really clear names, so as a developer, it's easy to find the functionality that you're looking for. So we've got a ton of extra functions now available in Lisk Elements 1.0 and I recommend any developers interested in using Lisk Elements in their JavaScript projects to take a look at our new documentation site. We go through all the functions, describe what they do, how to use them. Um, it's a really great resource. From core 0.9 to 1.0, it was a hard fork and there was a lot of feature added and there was a lot of API changes. So in order to be compatible with core, a lot of uh, change has to be made in the commander. 
So uh, first of all, we had to change all the API endpoint to be compatible with the uh, core. Also, we have added a lot of feature to create the transaction in the local machines in the commander. I sincerely believe that 1.0 puts us much farther and much closer to the final product that we want to achieve, which is scalable, which is secure, which lays the very good foundation to build something on top of it. February 5th, 2016 marks the beginning of LISC Core and up to today about 3,100 commits were made on its GitHub repository. For LISC Core 1.0 we are currently at 8,000 commits in total. That means only for this one release 4,900 commits were made. Broadly speaking, we can say that just into LISC Core 1.0 1.5 times more work went into than into all 41 LISCO versions released before.